If you serve a God that does not fail, oh, if you serve a God who will not fail you now, like he did not take you out of everything you went through just to drop you here and leave you here. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't take you through everything you came out of, and now you're, in t now you're in another season of where like uncertainty lies, and you're like, I don't know if God can really answer for this, but I want to tell you he's not going to fail you now. This, this is not the time where God decides, you know what? I don't know if I can handle my people anymore. Let me just fail them. This is not it. This is not the test. The test that God gives you is not for you to try to pass. God already is going to pass the test. He just needs you to trust. You just got to trust that your God won't fail. No matter what you're facing, no matter what obstacle is in your life, no matter what type of pain you are currently feeling, whether it's physical, whether it's mental, whether it's in your heart, I don't know what it is, but this is not the time where God all of a sudden decides he's not going to pull through for you. Ah, you know, I've been, I've been so broken in my life. That when I think of just God's stability... It's simply enough for me because I've been broken too, too much. Like I've been, you know, I've been through a lot, Brother Richard. We've gone through a lot together as a body. Individual, I don't know what you've gone through, sis, but sometimes it don't take much for God. Oh, for Jareem just to say, I love you. Ooh, and that's enough for me. That's good enough for me. Because a thousand tongues that have been around me could never told me uh, that I loved you enough. But all it took is just the mighty voice of God for him to say, I love you. Oh, and that is enough. He has my heart. You won me over, God. <laughs> your faithfulness alone, your stability, your constant, your consistency. It's enough. It was enough for me. It was enough for me. It was enough. So, Father God, we thank you this morning. Because upon this rock, you have built your church. This is where you build community. This is where love can be found. This is where creativity can expand. This is where entrepreneurship begins. This is where discipleship happens. This is where lives begin to change. This is where, be this is where chains begin to fall, Father God. This is where freedom and healing and provision is at, Father God. And the gates of hell will not prevail, Father God. It will do everything it can, but it will not succeed. It will not penetrate. It will, it, will, it will not happen, not today, not never, Father God. As long as you are on this throne, and who is more powerful than you? We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Listen, I am excited to be here before you in the house of God. You all want to be seated. Just a quick seat because you're going to get up again, I promise. Uh, but I'll let you have a little seat. I didn't tell you to wear them shoes. I didn't tell you to wear them. I'm comfortable. Them shoes don't fit you anymore, but it's all right in the name of Jesus. You, you, you wore them stilettos. You wore them heels. It's, but anyway, anyway, um, I, I'm, I am excited, as Pastor mentioned. He, he, he told me at this point, if he just tells me to preach, I'm going to preach, regardless of what his, his, his itinerary looks like, um, because that's just who I am now. It's just who, who, who God has has called me to be is how it's in my it's, it's in my DNA it's in my is my my fabrication how he designed me you know when when I didn't think I had anything of value to say God says you have a lot more it just it just, it just took it took 35 years it took 35 years but listen sometimes the best fruit the best fruit uh, takes the longest to grow so so you know I'm now I just embrace it you know I used to get frantic and scared and unsure but I was um, I was praying with my wife this morning and I couldn't help but think like God if if you told us to do it and we do it for you how could how could I make a mistake if if I put in the effort and I put in belief and I and I do it in the spirit of excellence what could really go wrong I stumble over my words you know I forget my train of thought but if you call me to be up here. And obedience alone is what is what makes you proud. Then you know I'm winning already. 
I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it already. So I am here before you, you know, and I'm just really excited because I, I truly believe that that God wants to continue in the series of light work. Like and, and pastor said it, not just in the sense of, OK, this this is easy to move. It's not just about weights, but it, more about like illumination, light happening, working inside of you where the light, the light that, that's working inside of you is, is working your courage. And like it works your patience. Like when you're stuck in traffic, right, the light begins to work inside of you because darkness is already happening in you. Because and the way you know dark is happening is because when, when you give them, you know, the, a friendly wave because they, they don't move or, or they cut you off. Y'all know what wave I'm talking about, right? That, so, so, but, but, but the light work says, hey, don't wave at them. Oh, okay. That's the light work. Or, or having joy in the most difficult circumstances. Choosing. Choosing joy. Because it don't take you a lot to be angry. Matter of fact, it don't take, I mean, some of you have like zero patience. You're mad right now for no reason. Just, just mad. <laughs> How much longer? <laughs> like, what, what'd you come here for? Like, I don't know. What you just mad about? Like, but you choose joy because that's the, that's, the, that's the light that's working inside. Like, I'm choosing just to be glad. Like, I'm going to smile. Why? Because the patience is already producing something so I can withstand this a little bit longer. I can handle this a little bit longer. We can be here a little longer. No matter what you're facing, listen, you, you got it. You, so, so we talked about, Pastor talked about in, in the very first series, I didn't think this was light work. I didn't think it required me to, to produce light, or not even produce light, but use the light. Using the light. It's, it's light work. And he said, he said that the rest, the rest of the year, uh, this year, is going to be a light work. And I believe that. Listen, y'all. some of y'all are probably thinking, look, we got three months left and something better happen right now. But listen, don't you know, all, all God needs is a moment. All God needs is a moment. He, 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 lo he loves instant. Immediately, instantly I became. Immediately I, tur I turned around. Immediately I gave you all it needs. God loves deadlines. God loves deadlines. Uh, because where death meets the line, that's where God says, oh, that's I'm going to step over that. And I'll, and I'll do more for you in, a, in an instant. I don't need a whole calendar year. I don't need 365. I don't need, I don't need 12 months. I just need a moment. I just need a moment. And I don't know, listen, do you have a moment for God? Do you have a moment for God this morning? Do you have a moment to say, you know what? God, you handle this. You know what, God? You fix this. You repair this, God. You put them in my life. You handle them. All you need is a moment. All I need is a moment. So when you feel like time is, is running out, it's not running out, Dorian. Matter of fact, he may meet you. He may meet you at, on December 31st at 1159 with 59 seconds left. Just to, like, like, like Dominique said, turn it all around. Turn it all around. Turn it all around. Someone better take that Tasha Cobb CD away from Dominique. But what she been listening to on the way over here? She called me talking about, I'm nervous, I'm anxious. For what, girl? <laughs> Believe. He's going to turn it around for you. Just give him the moment. That's all he needs is, is just a, a simple, a simple moment. Uh, uh, so, yeah, he's turning it around. Because I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't expect this to be light work. And then last week, last week, we talked about switching up. Switching up. You know, and, and we live in a culture now where it's like it's almost offensive to switch up on people. Oh, you changed. You switched up. Did I grow up? Absolutely. Did I mature? Absolutely. Do I think differently? Absolutely. What impressed me before don't impress me now. The desires I had before, don't, I don't have those desires now. Yeah, did it, did, did it interrupt your way of life? Did it interrupt our friendship? Did it disturb some things? Did it make you see me in a different light? Absolutely. Because I switched up. Because I switched up. And that, 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 that was God telling Moses, okay, I'm going to use the light to give you light so you can use the light I gave you. Because there's some things that you just got to do for yourself that God has given you the ability to do. 
Because don't you know, you're, you're supposed to be a self-sufficient person. Like, I don't know if you know that about you. Yes, I'm not saying to be independent of God, but he instills self-sufficiency in his people. Imagine you still trying to change your kids when they're 15 and 16 year old. Sooner or later, you got to learn to adapt them to become self-sufficient, not not independent of God, but self-sufficient to say, I believe in what God is doing in me. So let me let me show what God can do in my life by taking some action. So he, he switched up. And this light is changing. This light is changing. And because you're changing too, so are your moves. Your moves, your moves are, 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 are progress now. You move forward. That's why, that's why it bothers me when I talk to people who talk in circles, Brother Richard. Where are we going with this? Where are we going with this? Listen, I need a start and I need an end. Take me to one. But see, we want to go in circles because we're so afraid to end certain things. We go in circles because we really don't want to end it. Not yet, at least. Not yet, at least. So we go in circles. And because we sit twitched up and you change, you realize your value. You're realizing your value. And, and, and Pastor was talking about how, 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 how God brought the people out of Egypt. But now they're on this verge of, of the ocean. The Red Sea is right in front of them. And behind them are people who are trying to kill them and, captiv and captivate them. So what do you do? What do you do when you have your past that tries to kill you and captivate you, but you're also in front of uncertainty? It's all it is. It's uncertainty. But see, we don't. And, and Pastor said it's not worth going back. And, and rightly so. It's not worth going back. But sometimes we put more value in the choice than our own worth. And what I mean by that is if, if it's not worth going back, but if I still have this choice, I will at least go back. I can at least go back because I don't understand my value. And maybe because my value may be in a, in a new season of uncertainty. So I'll go back. Yeah, they'll treat me wrong, and it's not worth the abuse and the misuse. It's not worth how they talk to me, how they treat me, how they, how they, how they want to take credit from me, how they want to overlook me, how they want to they mistreat me, but at least I'm not alone. At least I'm not by myself. At least I get a ride to work. At least I got a place to stay. Because you believe or you put more value and emphasis on the choice alone. And God is saying, listen, I need you to know that uncertainty is room for new discovery about who you are. Un uncertainty has room for new blessings. Uncertainty has, new, has, has room for new assignments and new tasks and new people. Uncertainty, uncertainty is where you are going to find something that your ear has not heard, your eye has not seen, neither has it entered into your heart. So even if you just thought of something new, God is saying, I got to do something else because you already thought of it. You already heard of it. Uncertainty, you don't know what lies there. But what I do know is that when you remove uncertainty out of the equation, you take faith out of your life and you can't take faith out of your life because faith is not all the answers sometimes faith is just simply trust faith says I trust God Trey says tr trust says that he will fix this trust says that he can do it trust says that he's able trust says that he will trust says that he can trust says that he sees trust says that he hasn't overlooked me trust is believing that God will do everything he has promised he said he will do in your life but sometimes everything that he said he will do in your life is found in uncertainty why 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 would crossing the ocean not be a, a, a way of escape for you. You didn't think of that. You saw it as a dead end. You saw it as, as no way out. Why, why would that not be an option for you? Why would, why would opening the business not be an option for you? Why would not going back to school not be an option for you? Why would not building a legacy for you and your family not be an option for you? Why would not bettering your health be an option for you? You may be uncertain about it, but why would it not? Why would you not consider it? Why would you not even think about that? 
I know you, you don't have to know anything. You don't have to know everything. But if you got trust, yeah. trust in God. Why, why, why would it not be something for you to consider? Doing something that you never, ever, ever believe you could ever uh, do or achieve. So that's where we are. And he left us, Pastor left us on a cliffhanger. <laughs> right? We got him. He, he brought us all the way to the sea. Right? And, we, and he talked about how, 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 how God was able to, to switch up. And, and, and Moses, you are going to be able to do what I've called you to do. What happens next? And that's where I want to pick up on this very morning. So if you can, I want to go ahead and read from Exodus 14. We're going to stay in the book, and we're going to read from verses 21 through 29. It is a bit lengthy. While you're getting there, I'm going to get some water. Exodus 14, verses 21 through 29, and we are reading from the New Living Translation. I just love the way it was translated. <coughs> One of my favorite translations. That When you have it, say Amen. All right, I'm going to give it like two more seconds. One, two. When you have it, shout at me and say amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea, and the Lord opened up a path through the water. Through the water with a strong east wind. The wind blew all night, turning the seabed into dry land. So the people of Israel walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground with walls of water on each side. Then the Egyptians, all the Pharaoh's horses, chariots, charioteers, chased them into the middle of the sea. But just before dawn, the Lord looked down on the Egyptian army from a pillar of fire and cloud, and he threw their forces into total confusion. He twisted their chariot wheels, making their chariots difficult to drive. Let's get out of here, away from these Israelites, they sh the Egyptians shouted. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. <laughs> when all the Israelites had reached the other side, the Lord said to Moses, raise your hand over the sea again. Then the waters will rush back and cover the Egyptians and their chariots and charioteers. So as the sun began to rise, Moses raised his hand over the sea and the water rushed back into its usual place. The Egyptians tried to escape, but the Lord swept them into the sea. Then the water returned and covered all the chariots and charioteers, the entire army of Pharaoh, of all the Egyptians who had chased the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one survived, but the people of Israel walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground as the water stood up on a wall on both sides. Father God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the way that you're going to make in our, in our lives. Thank you for what you're going to do. And, Father, I'm not going to pray for the Cowboys, but I will pray for the running backs on my fantasy league. God, I pray that you heal them. They are injured, Lord, Father, and I'm, I'm, there's not many to choose left from the draft, God. And so thank you. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. amen. Listen, I am not trying to feed Richard or Pastor Jason for losing in my fantasy, um, in my fantasy draft. So... <laughs> Woo! Listen, I titled this message, I titled this message, You Will See This Through. I like it. You will see this through. Tell yourself, I will see this through. I will see this through. Look at your neighbor and tell them, you will see this through. Yeah, yeah, you are going to see this through. You are going to be able to experience the, the miracle of God in your life. You are, you are going to be the witness to your own breakthrough. You are going to be at first hand the, the evidence that God has used to say, my people will survive. My people will succeed. My people will make it out. You are the one that he is going to use to show you and to show others just the, the glory of what he is able to do. So you will see this through. You will see this through. You're going to get there. You will get there. You will arrive. Don't get off just yet. Don't, don't, don't quit just yet. Don't die here. I don't know who that's for. Just don't die here. Listen, I don't know, I, I don't know what, what it is you may be going through, but this, whatever your this is, this will not be the thing to take you out. 
This will not be the thing that, that consumes you. This will not be the thing that takes away your future. This will not be the thing that, that, that hurts, hurt, hurts your, your seeds and the seeds after them. This will not be the thing that will corrupt you. This will not be the thing that corrodes you. This will not be the thing that divides you. I don't know what this is, but you're going to see this through. Yes, you're going to come out of it. Yes, you, you, you will make it. You will make it. Right. So in, in verse 23, it talked about how the Egyptians and all of Pharaoh's horses, all the chariots and charioteers, those who drove the chariots. Pharaoh sent all of those to you. It's, it's for me. I found it so, so interesting how how the how the enemy sometimes or not sometimes, but knows your value more than what you know yourself. Because if you weren't invaluable. If you, if you truly were a slave, you won't need to send your entire army after me. Why would you have to use all your weaponry and all your mode of transportation just to come get me? If I'm really not who you think I am, or if you're really not who, I, who you say I am, if I'm really a nobody, then you can misuse me, and you can abuse me, and you can mistreat me, and you talk about me, and you spit on me, and you step on me, and you step over me. Why do you still try to chase after me? Not only that... Not only that, why do you still try to come after me with everything you got? Yeah. If I'm really not all that, yeah. if I'm really not who you think I am, why do you use all your resources? Why do you drain yourself? Why do you exude all the energy and effort and create lies and narratives to try to come after me if I ain't all that? I'm just a slave. Find another one. Irreplaceable. Yeah. You use all that, all that you got just to chase after me? That tells me I'm, I'm really worth something. I, I really am somebody. Listen, I don't know what you're going through, but enemy, is that all you got? Is that all you got? Who's bold enough to say, is that all you got? Is that really all you got? And it's crazy. He says, so they send them. They send, they send the enemy, right? Or the Pharaoh goes down the same path that the Egyptians take. That's through the Red Sea, sis. Don't you know that they're the enemy, right? Will try to go down the path that the, the same one you took just to try to get you. Some people will walk the path you want to walk. Not, 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 not because they believe in who you are. But because they want you, they want to keep you, they want to captivate you, they want to enslave you. They, they are trying to take away the future of who you are, the version that you're supposed to be, the version you're becoming, and the version you're being at the very moment. But the path, this path here, see, see while, while, while it, was, it was doable for me, it's going to be dangerous for you. Because, because this path this path comes for people who want to be free. Yeah. The, 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 the path I take is for people who believe in God, who believe in the hand of God, who believe in his word, that he sent his, his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross and rise up again so that you can have a life and a life more abundantly, so you can have eternal life. Yeah. This, path. this path. Everyone wants to take a path that you have when they see you become the free person you are. But they're going to try to take it as well. Everyone is. But it's dangerous to you. They don't want to capture you. They just, they want to, they want to possess you. And God is saying, you can't have what is mine. You are God's. They can't have you. The situation you may be in can't have you. It can't keep you. It can't torture you anymore. It can't torment you anymore. It can't have you. So, so when they go down, when they go down the path, it says just before dawn, God looked down a pillar of fire. It's crazy. God's binoculars was, was, was a pillar of fire. He saw that just before, just before light, light hit earth, God's like, okay, this is the best time for me to work. This, this, is, this is where I'm going to do my work. You see, because in darkness, in darkness, God has a thought. But in the, it's the light where God works. You see, because of, before the foundations of this world, 
Before there was light, I thought of you. Yeah. But when you were in your mother's womb, darkness, I knew who you were. Yeah. But it, it's until you come into the light that I can begin to work in you. Yeah, yeah. And that's when I can do my work for you. So it was through it was through a pillar of fire that he saw. He saw he saw that the enemy right was going towards was going towards the um, was going towards the, the people of Israel and he says that he confused the enemy. Wait, wait, but we know God is not the author of confusion. He's not the author of confusion. So what that means is what that means is, is that his storylines is not confusing. Right? He is who he is. But because God is an ultimate source, everything is created through God. So, so because God is, he has the power of confusion, but he doesn't use his confusion to talk to his people. Yeah. See, but what happens is when you, when, when, you, when you live a life that is in darkness, it becomes very confusing when you step into the light. You see, a lot of people are confused right now how you were able to forgive as quickly as you forgave. Because that's what's done in the light. Many people, many people are confused by the fact that you were able to get up even after whatever hardship happened in your life. Because they wouldn't be able to make it through because darkness says you don't get through it. But light says you, you are more than an overcomer through Christ Jesus. How is it? How is it you're able to face grief every single day? Uh, how is it that 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 the reward of love is pain? How is it the reward of love is pain, but you still choose to love at the risk, at the risk, knowing I'm going to be hurt, knowing I lost people before, knowing what they meant to me, knowing what it was to have them in my ear and to talk to me and to be there for me and walk with me, but I no longer have them there. How is it you're able to face that every single day and still decide to love? It's confusing. You're not supposed to make it out of this. You're not supposed to come out of it. You're not supposed to have your mind intact, even when internally you feel like some notes are kind of loose. Even when you feel like you're going about to just lose everything, you're about to snap and you're about to go off. How is it you don't? That's why I believe God is so merciful. He's so merciful to our enemies because if God really let me loose, if God gave me permission, See, you better, you better be glad I serve God. You better thank God for his mercy. Because if I really could, if I really could, I'd go off real quick, sis. My tongue is, oh, my tongue got me in trouble way before I knew Jesus. So just imagine, so just imagine, see, I come, see, God, where do you think the believers come from? From the world. He took us out of the world, but sometimes there's, there's some world that's left in us. It's in there. Oh, it's in there. Oh, it's in there. Some of us is a little bit more illustrative than others, but it's it's in there. So, oh, because 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 when you when you because as a mature believer, you don't ask God. You don't ask God to take it away. God, you 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 obey God when He says contain it. Woo. Contain it. If I can't remove it, contain it. I will constrain this. I will hold it back. And listen, I know I listen, I can know I can hit you where it hurts. Oh, you thought you knew my business. You thought you knew my see, I'm not quiet because I don't know what's going on in your life. I'm quiet because God says give to have self-control. I'm quiet because God says don't talk about your neighbors. God says love your neighbors. God says vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So I don't gotta say nothing. He'll say it. Matter of fact, he'll just bring light into your life and it'll begin to reveal. It'll see the difference between me and you. The difference between me and you is I let God, I let God show, show you my flaws anyway. I said, God, okay, if the light requires me to expose me, expose me. Because what you're gonna do anyway is cover me in your love. So if you don't like what God reveals reveals to you about me, guess what? He still loves me. He's because because love covers a multitude of sin. That means all oh, and some of us have multitudes on our multitudes. We have more than a plethora of sins. <laughs> Our sin knows how to sin, Brother Richard. It's crazy. Wow. 
But God, God is saying, hey, like, it's confusing. Confuse them. Confuse them. That's, that's what it is, is because, because the, the darkness is not, not supposed to know how to operate in the light. We're, we're too different. Night and day, yes. Yes. Darkness says retaliate. Light says forgive. Darkness says go off. Light says be patient. The world says hate. The kingdom says love. The world says take everything. The kingdom says give everything. And it's confusing. How is it you're able to what? Uh, he confuses the enemy. Uh, he confuses them. He confuses them, and 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 it's funny because when 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 they're confused, it's because how is it you're making it? How is it you're doing it? How how is it possible? that we were supposed to be more powerful than you, yet you are the one with the advantage right now. You are the one that is ahead right now. Brother Richard, you're not supposed to be ahead. I'm not supposed to be ahead, Dominique. We're not, we're like, how did we even get here? So he says, he says, he says, he says that, that who are these? Who are these Israelites? And it's funny that he points that out. These, these Israelites, who are they? Who, who are these people of God? These particular ones right here. That God is fighting their battle. That God is doing it for them. Who are, what is so special about them? This family. What's so special about this family that was, was supposed to fall apart after everything? Well, what is so special about this person who, who has a healing after everything they've gone through? Who is this person? Who is this community? Who is this church that gives the way that they give, that opens the doors the way they open the doors, that greet people the way? Who, is, who are these people? How is it they have the advantage? It's because God says, you're going to see this through. I'm going to do something in your life that you yourself didn't think you were going to be able to do because there's a peculiar, there's a peculiar uh, specimen in your DNA that says you belong to God. Yes. That you're his. That's why I put you in such weird positions of uncertainty and discomfort to reveal my power in your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just for you, but so that I can bear witnesses that are in the dark and show them what it is when my light works and people who don't deserve anything. We don't deserve his light. I don't deserve a way made for me. I don't deserve grace. But pastor said, it's effortless, effortless grace. I don't got to do anything. Matter of fact, I could just stand here and his favor will be upon me. Because he doesn't see me as a person that's always just standing here. He sees me as a person who is working in the light. He sees me as a person who is kind to his neighbors. He sees me as the person who loves their enemies. He sees me as a person who's starting to look more and more like Jesus every single day. So who are, who are these Israelites? Who are they that the Lord is fighting their battles? He twisted their chariots, making their chariots difficult to drive. Oh, man, they're not going to get to you. It's not going to get to you. It won't show up. They're not going to pull up. Listen, they're, they're lost on the way. Whatever, whatever is trying to attack you, whatever is coming after you, it's not going to get there. He, 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 God, everything, every mode of transportation that they're trying to take, every method that, will, that, that, that is happening to try to get to your life, it's not going to prevail. It won't succeed because you are, you are special to God. You are his child. God takes care of his people. God, God loves his sons and his daughters. Anything that gets in the way of what he loves and who he loves, he has to do something about it because he is jealous for us. He will intervene. Fight my battle, God. 
And it's crazy. It's crazy that the people of Israel didn't have to do anything. They didn't, they didn't take out their swords. They didn't wage this war. They didn't sling stones. They didn't throw spears. But yet, the enemy began to doubt themselves. <laughs> no, you're, mi- you're like missing me because, because you don't, there's some battles right now that you don't have to do anything. You don't because God is going to see you through this. And you are going to see you through this. You are going to see the progression. You are going to see the, 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 the momentum begin to take place in your life. You are going to break through this. And you don't have to do anything about it. You don't got to try to defend your honor. You don't got to try to defend your reputation. You don't got to say anything about anything. Just keep walking. Just keep moving. That's what they were doing. They were marching. They were going. They were, they were so focused getting out of the sea. They were so focused on getting out of this problem. They were so focused of what, uh, about what's ahead and not what's behind them. I can't, I can't, I can't let what, what used to be my past distract me from what's ahead of me. I believe that what is ahead of me is way better than what I'm leaving behind. It's way better than what is chasing me. It's a lot more healthier than what I couldn't let go. It's a lot more, oh, purposeful. So they had, they had to, they, they, they kept marching. And it says that when, when the Israelites had reached the other side, the Lord said to Moses, raise your hand over the sea again. Then the waters will rush back and cover the Egyptians and their chariots and charioteers. Mm. Oof. Moses, you raise your hand. You, you do it. You end this. Because there's, there's some breakthroughs that will not happen until you take action. You have to end this. You got to raise your hand. You got to let this go. I'm ending it now. I don't know what, what it is you have to end. I don't know if it's a person or a relationship, whatever it is. Maybe just, just me- mentally tormenting yourself. It ends today. It ends today. It stops now. I'm, I'm taking action. I'm taking action. It ends, it ends right now. It ends today. I don't know whatever's been bothering you, whatever, whatever's been heavy on you, whatever's been dark on your life, it ends today. It ends today. Today meaning the light. Today meaning the morning. Your joy is in the morning. It, 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 listen, sorrow, you stop here. The, bu- the, the bug stops here. Listen, I'm stepping into my tomorrow. I'm stepping into my joy. I'm stepping into my calling. I'm stepping into who I'm supposed to be. I'm not the slave anymore. I'm not the person you can just you can just misuse I'm not the person you can take advantage of I'm not the person you can do whatever you think you could do with me I'm not that one my cousin my cousin over here she'd be a one two or three right so it's like <laughs> I'm not the one and it, and, it, and it ends here and it's it's up to you it's up to you to take to say enough is enough To see yourself, to see yourself through this is going to require that, y- that you see yourself doing something radical, sis. Like crossing a sea. Radical. Doing something radical. Like taking your son up to a mountain to about to sacrifice him. You have to see yourself doing something so difficult. You got to see yourself doing what is uncomfortable. In order to see yourself through this, you got to see yourself waking up early, going to the gym if you want the transformation. If you want to see yourself eating healthier, you got to see yourself eating the fruits and veggies you don't like. If you want to see your having a healthy relationship in a marriage, you got to see yourself having calm conversations. You got to see yourself forgiving quickly. You got to see yourself serving others. You got to see yourself doing it to get to the other side. Because if you don't see yourself uh, uh, through it, you'll never believe that God saw you in the first place to do it. And he saw it in the midst of darkness. He thought of it in the midst of darkness. 
when it was all dark in your life, he's like, oh, my babies, they're going to be good. My son and daughter, they're going to be all right. They're, 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 listen, they're, they're, they're going to be all right. They're going to be okay. They're going to be more than okay. They're going to be prosperous. They're going to be, oh, they're going to be fruitful. They're going to, uh, that's, that's how God sees you. But can you see yourself through it? You got to be able to see yourself through it. Doing hard things, making hard choices. If it ends here, so be it. Yeah. So be it. Because I got, I got so much ahead of me. Yeah, yeah. You got so much in your life. There's so much future left. Yeah. Like I said, <laughs> their time is not running out. My God. So much is in store. Good. But this is, where, this is where we go through it. Whatever it is, we're going to go through it, and we're going to get through it. Yes, we are. And we'll get through it. Yes, we are. And we're going to make it. And, and, and it says in, in the last verses, but the people, they walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground, indicating, indicating that they made it through. Yeah. You're going to make it through. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, this, I felt like my week was, a, was an entire year. from waiting on health results, dealing with people who, who call and want to take their life. You know, the inevitable stuff at work, right? The coworkers and, and just the external things of the world, news, political climate, I don't try to absorb everything. I don't, sometimes I try to block it all off, but it's just the human in me has, it yeah. just gravitates to whatever news. And last week when, when Pastor was, was closing <clears throat> and we get to this, this place and I, and I thought, I thought he was going to ask me to pray, but I, but I, I heard the Holy Spirit say, tell the people, you'll see this through. And I thought that was going to be my prayer for closing out service last week, but it wasn't. So he gave me the word very early. I didn't think that the word was, I mean, I know like I, when we preach the word, like we're always going to be tested by the word first, yeah. right? Yeah. But I was so focused on, on everyone else that I didn't focus on me. And I get, okay, well, Aaron gets, hey, let, let's, let's self-assess here. You are important. Your, your health matters. Your well-being matters. Because you can only be the best for you before you can be the best to anyone else. So all through this week, I just heard, hey, you'll, you'll make this through. I, listen, I, I, to this day, I haven't got a health result yet that we're waiting on for, me, for, my, uh, for my family. But I just know, hey, we'll make it through. I don't know when we open the envelope, what's it going to say? I don't, that's uncertainty. But my hope is in, in the one who is certain. We heard that. I trust you. I don't know if this person's really going to take their life. Maybe they're just crying wolf. I mean, I, I hate to think that way because a lot of people, when they do that, you know, they, they're really asking for help. And I thank God that they, you reached out. But it's someone I, I love so dearly. And I'm like, I'm like, God, just keep them. Yeah. Yeah. Your loving and merciful hand. Like, I don't even know right now. Like, maybe, maybe they, they did it. I don't, I, it's not for me to figure out, but God, I just trust you. And he, I just hear, you'll see this through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. We're going to see this through. You, I'm going to see my wife healthy. Yeah. I'm going to see the person I love living. I'm going to see the promotion I've been waiting for. Have. I'm going to see it through. You'll see, you're going to see the business open up. You don't know how right now, but you're going to see it through. You are, you, it's, it's going to happen. 
God is not, God, 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 basically what this, this word what, what was about was that everything he promised, it, you are going to be able to, to, to live through it. What he said was for you. You're going to be able to like, to like indulge in it. You're going to be able to dwell. Like you're going to witness that God really came through for you. Maybe it's been a lot of discouragement because you just didn't know how, when, where, or what. But we're going to see this through. Like you're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're, you're, you're going to be okay. These people made it out to sea when they didn't consider it an option. So when God does something so extraordinary, when he uses the anomaly to do something in your life, it's a reminder that he's always been in control. While you couldn't think of outcomes, while you couldn't think of the, the, the solution, and you were trying to fix it one way, you were, you were hoping it came through one way, God says, I got a completely other direction for you. And I truly believe this morning, and those of you that do believe, you stand to your feet. That God is, is going to help you see this through. You're going to see the deliverance of God in your life. You are going to see his provision like never before. Some of us are going to walk out here with a miracle. I believe it. You're going to get a phone call. You're going to get a phone call. Just like the news you were hoping for. Matter of fact, just new news. Like, you, hey, I didn't, where did this come from? I wasn't even praying about this. Like, this didn't even cross my mind. But for me, yes, you. Yes, you. Yes, you. Yes, you. Absolutely. God is absolutely sure. Yes, you. No mistake. Yes, you. Yes, you're, you're for it. You're for it. It belongs to you because you belong to him. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you this very morning for your promise that are always yes and amen, God. Father, I pray for the heart this morning that wasn't sure they were going to make it. But, God, you are the confirmation that we will make it, Father God. We are going to see this through. What you say, what you said that was going to happen is going to happen. You're not, you're not a liar. You don't repent. You make no mistake, Father God. And I pray, Father, that as we leave this place, God, we remember who you are in our life. And we can walk with you. No matter what season of our life, Father, whether it's crossing through a sea, God, as long as you're with us. If we walk in on the, the mountaintops, God, as long as you're with us. Be with us and everywhere we go, Father. The light, Father God, I pray that we allow it to work in our lives. Because you have been working in the light this whole time. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.